All right, so we are now moving on to lesson seven. And as always, the first session for these lessons is just a short introduction, kind of gets you the general idea of what we're trying to learn here. So um, for the learning target here, if you see it on your screen here, uh, explains the patterns in numbers as zeros or the product when multiplying a number by powers of 10. So let me translate that to something fifth graders can get. Uh, just lets you know that there's, um, a certain trick or element to multiply them by a power of 10. And when I say power of 10, I mean literally 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, a million, 100 million. Um, basically numbers that have a lot of zeros and a one. So the key to that is the z amount of zeros that you're actually multiplying or dividing by lets you know where you're going to shift your, your numbers into place value. And as we learned before, if we multiply by 10, we move our numbers up to a greater place value. If we divide by 10, we move it to something smaller. But um, let's get right into the warm up. So it says complete the times 10 pattern here. So uh, we start with 3 times 10, which gives us 30. Uh, then we do 30 times 10. And again, the way we learned how to do this before, like maybe a month ago, was to take these first numbers. And we've got 3 times 1, and then we just add on our zeros, so we've got 300. And now we take the 3 times 1 here, and then we got 1, 2, 3 zeros. And then we take the 3 times the 1, and then we go 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros there. And again, I don't use commas for my thousands and millions because I find it's very confusing for kids. Um, and it's kind of unnecessary at this point. So again, see the pattern. So we've got one zero, we've got two zeros here, three zeros here, and four zeros. So you notice though, it's all you're doing is multiplying by the same number each time. You're multiplying by 10, but you're, it's really making the size of your numbers increase quite a bit. But that's the pattern, um, and we'll jump into that some more. So you'll be copying down some notes uh, starting here on page 133. And again, because we're watching a video, you can always pause it, rewind it, or um, yeah, just, that's anything you can do with your videos since um, you could just go at your own pace. All right, so for this question, if, you, if I was in class and teaching this to you, we talk about this, like what patterns can you find when you multiply or divide by 10, 100, or 1,000. I kind of talked about that at the very beginning, is those determine um, where you move your numbers in the place value chart. And I was taught when I was a kid that you move the decimal point, um, but I'm going to teach you both ways, because both are accurate, where you're actually moving numbers to different place values. But some kids find it easier just to kind of move that dot or move that decimal and do it that way. And you're going to get some practice with that with your IXL in a couple of days. All right, for the first one here, um, complete the problems below. So numbers like 10, 100, or 1,000 can be written as a product of tens and are called powers of tens. So again, like I mentioned before, uh, when you're multiplying and dividing by tens, it does quite a bit um, and is very simple in the fact you don't really have to do any math as much you just have to move numbers um, so we have here this is just like our warm-up and what we're doing here is we're going to down here a we've got three times ten times ten um, but actually the ten times ten is one hundred and we know that that's three hundred um, part b is ten times ten times ten so that would have been from here to here. And that means it would have been 3 times 1,000. And that gave us 3,000. And then it was 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which was this right here. And that was 3 times 10,000, which gave us 30,000. Again, all I really had to do is multiply three times one and then um, take all of the zeros involved with my uh, math equation here and put them together with it. All right, pretty simple. 
Let's look down at two. All right, complete the equations to divide 30,000 by powers of 10. So now we're going backwards. And this is just to show you that the same pattern is true here. So we've got um, 30,000 here, and we're dividing by 100. And notice where it ends up here, it ends up on 300, because basically when we divide it by 100, see that we had those two um, zeros there? That meant we moved our 30,000 back to place values, and it gave us 300. So if you actually visualize that, you could see that it moves backwards like that. And then let's talk about 30,000 divided by 10,000. Um, that would bring us right back down to here, because 10,000 would be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. There's four zeros here, and it's four zeros right there. That's how I knew how to do it that way. And that's going to give us an answer of three. So again, dividing by powers of 10, make sure your number is smaller. It moves it down to smaller values in your place value chart. Multiplying by 10 moves it to the left, moves it up to larger ones. All right, once you get that concept, it's pretty smooth sailing. Go ahead and turn the page. Let's look at number three. All right, now here is what your IXL is going to be based off of. Um, I'm not sure how much exposure you got to exponents, but we're going to talk about the bare concepts today. And your IXL will be pretty simple and give you some general idea how to do that. But um, So you can write a power of 10 using exponents. So it is way easier to write a number 10 with a, that smaller number next to it, like these right here. These are exponents. Then writing out 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, or so on and so forth. Like right here, that little 4 up there that's in red, that's our exponent. Let's just go ahead and let's label that. And that exponent um, says it's not 10 times 4. It just says, hey, this number 10, it's called our base number. We're going to multiply that by itself four times. So um, later on, when you're older, you'll be using more complex numbers and stuff like that. But we're going to stick with 10s for now. All right, so let's take that information, go down here, look at this uh, table. So the standard form is um, just basically how the number looks without anything else added to it. So here's our 10. Um, product 10s is 10 right there, and that's the exponent is 10 to the first power. That just means 10 is only shown one time. Down here, so we got that. Pretty simple. Now we have 100, and we know that's um, looking over here at the exponent, the 10 with the 2, that says we've got a 10, and we're going to show that twice. So 10 times 10 is 100, and that checks it for that one. Down here for this third row, that's a little more difficult because we're missing these two boxes, but uh, let's just think about it this way. So we have 10 times 10 times 10. Over here on the right, write your 10, and then you write a very small number next to it with a 3 and that lets you know that you have 10 and you're multiplying it by itself three times and we know um, we can do 10 times 10 times 10 pretty easy I'll multiply all my ones that gives me a 1 and then I'll add up my zeros 1 2 3 and I'll put them over here like that and that gives me a thousand so and let me check that off so now you're already exponent experts uh, because now you get the basic concepts of it. And that's why the IXL you might find is pretty simple, but it really drives home the fact of how the basic components of exponents work. All right, let's move on to number four. All right, so now we get a little more complex. Um, complete the table to show different ways to write 300, 3,000, and 30,000. So, um, we've got this different way of showing things with called exponent form so it still uses the things we just learned in the table above but it adds a little twist to it so let's look at the first row here so we have the standard form is 300 we know you can get 300 by multiplying 3 times 100 
And notice how they put the two zeros in red. That's to indicate to you that you got it. You can um, change it to this next column here of three times ten times ten. And then this ten times ten is this. So especially later on in science, like high school and even middle school science, you're going to use this exponent form quite a bit to give your answers uh, because you're going to be working with some gigantic numbers. And instead of writing like a number that has like 12 to 15 different numbers in it, you can write it in this uh, what they call exponent form and just makes it really simple and easy. All right, let's go back down here. Um, so that's done. Now we have 3,000. That we can break down to three times a thousand. I three I, I see I've got three zeros here. So that's pretty simple in that that's gonna give me ten times ten times ten. So that's gonna be three tens. And then if I've got three tens there, that's three times ten to the third. So all of these values here in this row are all the same. They're just written in four different ways. We got the standard form, power of 10, uh, standard, power of 10, factors of 10, and exponent form. They're all the same value. So we're not really doing anything except showing it a different way. Um, 30,000, that's uh, 3 times 10,000. And we know you have to multiply uh, 10 four times to get 10,000. And that gives us 10 to the fourth over here. So again, all of these values are the exact same. They're just shown in four different ways. And let's work on this last question. Um, how do you know how many zeros are in the product? Five times 10 to the fourth, what is the product? Um, so this is the key right here, this exponent, because we know now that 10 to the fourth equals 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So we know that much. We also know that equals 10,000. So this part right here, um, that's worth 10,000. And then this five times that number, you know, five times 10,000 equals 50,000. So we know that there are four zeros in that answer. And that's how we get a lot of those. And again, you are now experts in exponents. OK, so um, what's your classwork? Let me show you. Your classwork for today is going to be E1. It's called Understanding Powers of 10. Um, I would like you to go to 100%, though, and not for a house ticket today, because if it's something that's way too easy, or something I know you guys can get done pretty quickly. I won't give out tickets for that. Uh, so just go to 100%. You got to get a gold medal. Um, ask anybody for help that's here if you need it, or come see me in study hall, and I'd be glad to help you. All right, good luck, everybody.